Muy buenas tardes, mi raza. Today is Wednesday, December the 20th, 2023. And that's right, ya mero is Christmas, Navidad. Um, noche buena, however you like to relate to it. So with that being said, of course, I have to talk about the holiday. That holiday, this holiday. Um, the other day we went to the mall to take pictures of my girls. It's a tradition since my um, oldest was first here on earth. So it's been a almost 12 year tradition. Every December we go with the um, kids and take pictures. Sometimes with my sister and her kids, my other sister and her kid, it, you know, just depends, whatever. And we walk over to Macy's and drop off the letter to Santa Claus. Well, this year was very sad and shocking because the Macy's in the Montclair Plaza did not have the mailbox. The lady wasn't able to tell us exactly why the mailbox was not there, but she said, you know what, they didn't bring it this year. Something about it was probably damaged somewhere along, you know, um, travel to put it away or whatever store it so whatever they hurt my heart my kids were sad my baby was devastated so now we're gonna just have to um drop it off at the regular post office and hope that santa will get it within the next three days because all them wishes are in there right um so i was thinking you know like where did the first sit down Santa come from, right? And I know it's a question now you're thinking too, like what the heck, where did that like tradition even come from? Why do these old men just sit around at the mall and hang out with these little kids and you know, okay. My understanding is that they work for the real Santa. And um, you know how that goes, you tell him what you want and he, tell Santa what you want Santa can't be everywhere but um, yeah this this really wild tradition I say wild because it hit it started as just a hmm with a man and here we are over a hundred years later and it's still like tradition you know everybody wants to go see Santa the day we went to um, take our pictures with Santa was actually pet day. I personally, uh, I'm not too big with it. I'm allergic to like cats and dogs and stuff. Um, but you know what, it is what it is. I, I know there's a lot of pet parents that love their little furry babies, so I get it. But I don't know, it was just crazy. Like all these dogs are trying to like gangbang on each other. They're barking and this and that and like howling in the mall and shivering. And it's kind of sad because you could tell they were kind of scared. Their little tails like between their legs and their little faces are all low and this and that. Um, I don't know to me I I don't know I just don't see the point of bringing a dog to the mall maybe it's something like um, an animal like the, the shelter should do something like that because they're all there but like I said to each their own for the most part it was a contained environment there was these big old dogs that were kind of like scary to walk by but you know they're on leashes and stuff so I get it it's cute it's really cute you know um, so yeah, going back to where this tradition started, it actually started back in 1890. There was a man, a Scottish man, by the name of James Edgar. He obviously settled here in the US in a city named Brockton, which is in Massachusetts. Okay, so let me tell you about El Señor Edgar. Tenía él un um, dry goods store. So he used to, you know, sell this and that. Whatever. He had opened that store in 1878. So, you know, he, he had his, his run with this little store. 
and he just enjoyed the community he enjoyed the people the kids everybody that would come into his store so what this senor would do was um he would have different costumes depending on the time of the year and he would dress up and you know greet his customers and you know do all these like events for the community one of his most favorite was fourth of july he would rent an actual trolley to pack you know the children in and have them you know take a little ride around the the little area right there the little neighborhood um barbecues that kind of stuff and you know the the neighborhood there the community they loved him for that because he was just such a humble and noble man you know he was always about the people one of his most favorite suits was a clown suit. He would dress around, walk around his store, you know, interact with the kids mainly, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, seeing all the feedback from this and the way the community really loved him, he decided to have a Santa Claus suit made, tailored, whatever, just for him. So, come Christmas, he would sit there and impersonate Santa He thought that that would be like a good idea to bring people in and at the same time to entertain the kids. He was really fond of the children, you know. He's just a good man. So, yeah, he had his suit done. Come that Christmas of 1890, he dressed up. And it was a one-man circus, so it was kind of hard for him to be dressed like Santa and attend the register and help out people that had questions or needed assistance. So he would wear this suit through the week, only an hour a day, and, you know, sit there and ho, 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 and how are you? And on the weekends, he would wear it about three hours and this and that. But word got around that there was a santa claus here at the store so a lot of the people started coming just to see santa so the kids can talk to him and this and that he ended up having to hire a person to actually dress like santa and help him out because as it was bringing all this like popularity to his store people were obviously buying more because they're in there so no se daba cabo like to sit here and mingle with people and actually tend to the register and everything else so it worked out very good for him he had his Santa and he was you know doing his part at the register well it became such a success word got around real quick newspapers were everywhere okay you know back in Brockton mr. James Edgar has a Santa blah 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 oh it was like wildfire everybody was like wow why didn't we think of that see Mr. Edgar he picked up this idea from a cover of a magazine that he had been waiting just for the right time that magazine was Harper's Weekly from 1862 so think about it he sat with this idea for about 30 years to be a walking Santa somewhere and it would help the business genius freaking genius he literally cooked that idea for 30 years and here we are over a hundred years later and we still do the department store Santa's okay the following year everybody started doing the department store Santa it was like envidiosos they were copying each other oh my god everybody needed a Santa whatever it was a success it was a super success because again people had the curiosity to see Santo Claus so they would come and of course with a visit to any store I know I do it. I go in for toothpaste and come out with $100 worth of stuff I just did not need. That is the perfect way of merchandising, networking, whatever it is you want to call it. Sadly, Mr. Edgar had a stroke that left him partly um, paralyzed in 1904. And in 1909, he had another stroke, but that one his life he didn't make it past that one um, 
Thank you, Senor Edgar, for making our visits to all the stores that much better. Thank you for giving us those precious memories with our little children. If you're like me and you take pictures every year, you can see the changes in their little faces and the way they get bigger. Like I said, my, my oldest is going to be 12 soon. So seeing her from a tiny little thing that couldn't even sit up to now wearing little heels for special events, it's like mesmerizing to me. It's amazing. Um, so yeah, he, he started all this by the 1920s. Department store Santa's became an actual holiday fixture. Que es eso? They were so good at helping these businesses wheel in the customers. Every single department store carried one across the US and you know, across the world actually. If you know, if that part of the world has these fancier stores or whatever. Not even fancier stores, stores in general. With the fancy department stores leaving main streets and downtowns of the cities and, you know, areas and stuff and becoming actual parts to the mall, um, yeah, every single big chain department store had these Santas and, yeah, just made everything that much better. All right, guys, so this is the story of the first department store Santas. I have a couple more um, stories with the wows and the not so wows that have to do with this holiday. I hope that I brought information to you guys that you were not aware of because I had no clue where this whole idea about Santa Claus came from at the store. But I love it and obviously it's here to stay and I just hope it's not one of those traditions that gets canceled out by all these you know, people that ain't cool with it. Um, so that is what I have for you guys today. Como siempre, gracias for spending your tarde with me. Y pues, ahí los miro al rato. Los adoro. Bye.